Yep, the sun is casting its uh, last rays of the day. And I'm walking down Union Street in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And uh, all I can think of is, you remember Tron, the arcade, and how cool going to an arcade was? Well, there's an arcade in town, so I think I should go and check it out. What do you think? Yeah, let's go see. I was better at Miss Pac-Man. Right, so I'm at play, and as you can see, it's relatively dark in here. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind when, you, when you're heading out to an assignment or if you want to explore things. So in this case, uh, I like to limit myself to specific lenses or specific pieces of gear. Like that, you know what you're going to, the way the camera is going to see the world. So in this case, I have a, a Canon 50mm 1.4. So that'll give me some nice latitude for low light. And I have, of course, my trusty 16-35-2.8 Series 2, which is, quite frankly, my favorite lens ever made. So. Well, look, it's Ms. Pac-Man. Oh, man, that game was so cool. As a matter of fact, I think my favorite game might have been Frogger. I wonder if he's got Frogger here somewhere. But anyway, so, um, look, there's a cool scene happening right there with a the gentleman playing with his daughter. I mean, those cool moments always make for interesting photos because that's ultimately what this is all about. So let's go take some photos. What do you think? The key is just to take in what it is that you see in front of you. And that mannequin wearing that play t-shirt just really worked out incredibly well for this. But then, you know, pick different angles. What else do you have? Well, I have a 50 millimeter. Let's try the other side. I broke the frame up into different planes by putting that other kid in the foreground, straight in the middle. I like vantage points that challenge the viewer to look at the photo for that little bit longer. Now I'm just using a slow shutter speed to blur the puck to make a more dynamic image. And you can see that that background there with a woman yelling with the 3D glasses on will make for a good shot, but you'll have to wait for that later. The less you speak with the subjects, the more you become the fly on the wall. There's only one way to have them really ignore you and that's if you're just focusing on doing your job and just let them do whatever it is that they're doing. And, and you can see here, he's completely oblivious to what it is that I'm doing. Granted, he's playing a video game so he's got better things to worry about, but to do good photojournalism you really need to become invisible or at least to have people accept the fact that you're there to capture the moments. Yes, I love my wide-angle lens, but as you can see here, I'm also trying to get detail shots. Photos that add to the overall quality of the series. But it's all about capturing the actual moments when things happen. Or when they don't, but they set the scene. Keep a close eye on what's happening outside the window, because that really is what I'm waiting for. I see the cars, they're stopped at a light, and there they go. And I'm going to get that minivan in the background. Got it. Alright, now that shot's real interesting because it just happens that there's enough light. Not too much light outside because the sun's going down. And there's just a night, enough light in here so that the exposure is not too extreme between the outside and the inside. So the key is to literally just wait for something to happen, in this case a car to go by. If your shutter speed's low enough, then you're going to get a nice blur with a car going by. And of course you want the screen, so it all worked out pretty well. Alright, 
this cat behind, oh, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> I was like, this That's cat. That's Adam, <laughs> and he's the owner of this place. So man, this looks really good. Thank you, this was a lot of work, but I'm so glad we did it. Yeah, you know, I have yeah. to be honest with you, like, I'm a huge uh, Tron fan. I'm trying, I want one so bad, I am the you same know, way. I need one so bad. You need the Tron game. I have to, it's a hard one to find, and they're very expensive, so we're working on it, very so, soon. Do you own all these machines? Are you renting them? I co-op, so I co-op them with uh, Bitbar and Salem. Yep. Yeah, so those Very guys cool. are uh, setting me up real nice with good machines. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, I was not expecting Centipede, the original. Oh, we have to. Oh, this is all original game. All original cabinets, 80s and 90s stuff, yeah. And we got the other room coming. We'll have another 20-something games in the other room. Right. Ski-ball, basketball. What other room? The side room that I can't show you yet. Oh, I have a sorry. whole other room, arcade, that we're working on right now. All right, so what's your favorite game? My favorite game is air hockey. Oh, you got... Yeah, I had to have air hockey. The sound of air hockey. Come on, by. So yeah, the air hockey game, man, that's like a, that's like legendary. That's the sound of air hockey to me as an arcade. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. I just took some shots of some guys playing and it's like... The, the happiness, the childlike happiness on their face, so that's, what, that's what this was all for. You know? Alright, so last question I got for you. Now, we're of a certain generation where video <laughs> games were like the hot thing. Oh yeah. So I see a kid over there, she's probably like 10 or something. Oh yeah. Like I don't think she knows what a video game in an arcade setting is. <laughs> this has blown their minds. And that's what I wanted. Like we, it transcends all generations right now. All the way from we started with it, and they've never played it, and it's first for them. But it's like it's like the primitive technology is yeah, exciting yeah. to them, you know. So, so last question. All right, I said last question before, but that's the way it rolls. <laughs> I know you. Yeah. So, how does a firefighter like? What did you like? All of a sudden, like had it like uh, like an epiphany? Like, dude, I need to open up an arcade or what? Well, it's like you know a lot of stressful jobs, and not that this isn't stressful, but my wife and I talked about we love downtown, and it felt like it was missing something and I'm like if I have to be somewhere all the time I want to be in a fun environment yeah so everyone's having fun here and smiling and laughing and that's all I could ever ask for that's what I wanted just to have some happiness you know I think it's time to go play that's right <laughs> thanks Once in a while, I am allowed to have my own fun. So let's see what we can do with this. Here we go. It's time for Galaga. This is called the two finger super snap like that. Oh, look at those finger moves. <laughs> my God. Crikey, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I've played an actual arcade, man. You know oh doing. no, no, I messed up. <laughs> All right, well, I got some nice shots. And it's time to head back. The hardest thing about situations like this is, is honestly how dark it is so if you're not comfortable with the way your camera sees the world it's really hard to get quality shots that you can work with